time for an update on what I've been up to recently, as it's been way overdue, and that is I've been designing and testing a brand new 230 size quadcopter frame incorporating carbon fibre arms. As you all know, the Pion 230 quadcopter frame, which is available for download on Thingiverse, is a pure plastic frame. This is great for beginners. It's a cheap way to get into the hobby if you're looking at uh, starting uh, dr drone racing or F just FPV flying. Um, but anyone that's been flying this for any length of time will probably tell you that in hard crashes or uncontrolled landings, uh, the most popular item which needs replacing as it breaks would be the actual arm itself. So why not design the next model up from the Pion 230 with carbon fiber arms? And this is it here. So this is, uh, follows the same profile or wheelbase as the Pion 230. However, I've replaced the arms with 12 millimeter carbon fiber tube. And with the flight testing and crashing that I've been doing so far, uh, the carbon fibre and the main body is very strong, however the, uh, the part which continues to break is the motor mounts that I've designed here. So it's quite clear to me that um, the motor mounts that I've made are not durable and I'm already in the process of redesigning this. Uh, the motors that I'm using here are the 1804 motors that I took off the Pion 230, but I'll be upgrading these to 22 size motors very shortly. And in preparation for those motors, which are in the mail, hopefully here next week, um, this is the new designed motor mount. So I have the carbon fiber going right through to the end where the motor would mount, rather than the motor hanging off the carbon fiber. Uh, this, this part here is two pieces, it's symmetrical, and just clamps over the carbon fiber to keep it uh, locked in place. But uh, no matter how tight you make this, because it is a, a smooth surface, you do need to uh, drill a hole uh, at least right through the carbon fiber and lock in the motor mount uh, to the carbon fiber itself. So in this instance, for a 22 size motor, I'll be utilizing the, the motor mount holes as part of the mechanism to clamp this entire uh, bracket onto the carbon fiber frame. And the same with uh, underneath the frame where the carbon fiber attaches to the main body. Uh, this, this plastic clamp here just clamps right down onto it, but again, um, in a hard crash, what I've found out is the arms will rotate, so I've just drilled a small hole and I'm just using M2 screws here for the time being to keep the, the arms locked in, and that seems to be working quite well. Uh, also, other upgrades with the Pion 230 Pro is because we're using a tube, well, why not run the motor wires through that tube and have the ESCs nestled away within the skeleton of the base of the frame. So going back to the original Pion, we have this, uh, this skeleton which provides all the strength for the base, hence why this part really breaks and it's always on the extremities of the frame. So why not utilize uh, all that space that could be had for the ESCs? So that's what they are currently. Uh, and moving up, we have the, uh, the, speed uh, the, uh, the flight controller, your receiver, your CCD camera, and your, um, your video transmitter and of course, battery mounted on top. So I hope to have this uh, design finished in the next month or so after I've upgraded the motors, upgraded the motor mounts and done plenty of crash tests to make sure that yes, it's gonna be durable. Some other changes I'm making to the Pion 230 Pro frame is the uh, FPV camera that you would normally use. So this is a CCD camera. Uh, this is just a ring clamp that I'm using to mount the camera in place rather than using a, uh, a board a board camera which you would normally attach on the old Pion 230 frame there. Uh, also with the new breed of action cameras coming to market, so this is the Run Cam 2, um, they incorporate low latency uh, live video out while recording in uh, 1080p and 720p. So it's, it's possible that we may start using these action cameras as our FPV cameras because the latency is getting to the point where it's pretty damn good. So why not incorporate the, uh, the action camera into the main body of the frame rather than having it as an afterthought sitting on top. So part of the other changes I've made here is I've allowed the flight controller to be pushed quite, quite far back on the main frame and that gives enough length to mount your uh, action camera 
uh, within the main body and potentially tilt it up as well. So that can be protected and nestled away and actually be part of the main frame rather than sitting on top where it can fly off and, and potentially get damaged. Uh, the other big change that I'm making to this is this entire power system, so that is motors, ESCs, and flight controller can be all pre-soldered uh, before installing it into this frame. So your entire power, power system can be pre-soldered, pre-tested even, and then just slid into the carcass of this frame. The Runcam 2 action camera that I've purchased recently, I haven't had a chance to actually use this yet, so I've taken it out of the box, but that's about it. So I'll be doing a review of, of this um, coming up shortly as well. Uh, I purchased this one from Banggood. Um, the main reason for me getting this is this is now, I guess you could say, uh, an upgrade from the Mobius action cameras because this does support 1080p at 60 frames a second. And of course, having that um, low latency live video out is also quite important. Um, other benefits of this is the, uh, the RF shielding, uh, which will be good for mounting it near your receiver, especially if it's inside the main frame of the new Peon, and plus the Wi-Fi capability, so being able to you know, check the uh, the shot of the camera from your phone before flying around all day, taking the footage back and going, oh, I've had the camera off to the side or there was something in the way or so on. So uh, stick around for that review as well. And just something else that I'll be switching over to shortly is my radio control link for my quadcopter. I'm currently using an FR Sky transmitter and receiver uh, on the 2.4 gig spectrum. I'm thinking about switching over to the 433 megahertz spectrum and a really cheap way of doing that currently is buying these Futaba Open uh, LRS Orange RX transmitters from Hobby King. They are an absolute bargain at the moment and hopefully they stay that way for a very long time. I picked this up for $14 Australian or I think it's under $10 US so I picked up two of these Here's the second one out of the case. I've already um, downloaded the Open LRS NG software into both of these. Uh, my plan was to convert one of them to a receiver, say this one here, but I just ended up purchasing a micro uh, 433 receiver from Hobbies Fly. It's the uh, Brotronic Sub Micro Receiver, only weighs 1.7 grams, so I thought I'd give that a, that a try. That's in the mail as well, so whenever that gets here, that's when I'll switch over from 2.4 to 433. Uh, and of course, you just need an FTDI um, adapter uh, here to just program the Open LRS uh, NG software into these. This one has the 3.3 volt jumper. Although I don't even think you need one with 3.3 volt, you just don't apply the power pin, you just plug the power in via the, the front and the regulator will take care of the rest. So stick around for that one at some stage as well. And finally, to round out last year's videos where I was testing the strength of various materials with the Peon 230 quadcopter arm, the test that I didn't do was printing these in our favourite ABS and PLA materials. So what I'll do shortly after I've finished editing and uploading this video is um, print out two of these arms in the ABS blue. I have a little bit of this blue ABS left, so I'll be printing an arm at 50% and 100%. Um, and also in PLA at 50% and 100%, and I'll do the same strength tests again. I'll try to break these arms by hand, uh, followed by hand tools if I can't, just to get a, you know, a subjective feel to how strong the polycarbonate, nylon, and PETG materials were. However, I have a funny feeling I'll be able to break this material by hand without the need of hand tools, so stick around for that one. I hope to get that video out shortly after this one. Cheers!